Hi and welcome to C programming. In today's lesson we're going to learn how to use the if else statement. So let's quickly backtrack to the previous lesson where we learned the if statement. So if we look at the if statement you will see there's a condition and there's either a true or a false. If the condition is true some if true statements will be executed. And if the condition is false, the code will just be skipped and continue with the rest of the code. So there's either a true or a false. Now the difference between an if statement and an if else statement is the fact that we're going to utilize the false part as well. So if we look at the flow diagram of the if else statement, you will see that there's a condition and if this condition is true, some if true statements will be executed. And if this condition is false, some if false statements will be executed. So there's either a true or a false. There's no third option. So it's either the if true statements that will be executed or the if false statements that will be executed. If either one of these true or false statements are executed, it will continue with the rest of the code. So let's have a look at how we would implement this in C programming using CodeBlocks IDE. So here we have our main structure of the C program or the layout. It's We've got hash include stdio.h, that's our standard input and output library. We've got our main function and we've got return zero. So let's say, for instance, our program needs to take an input from the user for a mark, for let's say a test. And this mark must be input, must be service input into the program. And the program needs to determine if this mark was a pass or a fail mark. Okay, so let's start. We need to first create an input variable. This input variable will be used to store the user input. So we're going to ask the user to give us input, input a mark. Okay. And then we're going to use the scan if statement to retrieve input from the command prompt or terminal. So we're going to use percentage D for decimal and percent input. So the input from the user side will be then stored inside the input variable. Now that we have asked the user for input and we've retrieved that input, we need to go and determine if this input was a pass mark or a fail mark. So by using the if else statement, we're first going to use if and then there's a condition. If this condition is true, we're going to need to do something. So let's assume that if input is bigger than 50, it's going to be a pass. But be careful, 50 is also included in a pass. So it needs to be bigger than and equal to 50. Then we can print out pass to the user. Pass. Now, if this condition is not true, we need to do something else. And that's the keyword, else. So if this condition is true, we print pass, else we're going to print out fail. Okay, so that's our if else statement in real code. So if this condition is true, we do this. If this condition is false, we do this. But be aware that one of these must always run. It's part of how the structure works. Okay, so either one of them will always run. Okay, so let's save this and see what happens. I press the build and run button terminal or command prompt open and I can actually input a mark. So input a mark 
80, press enter, and we've got a pass mark. Okay, so let's say if we input 49, that's a fail. That's a fail. And let's just double check for 50. If we check for that boundary, 50, and it must be a pass. And lo and behold, it's a pass. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the if if else statement in real C program, programming language. So, this program is not yet perfect. There's a long lot to do still. Um, for interest sake, in the next lesson, we're going to have a look at how to utilize a different if structure to actually check for limits. Because let's say, for instance, if we run this program and the user made, makes a mistake and enters minus 5, that doesn't make sense. Minus 5 out of 100 or minus 5% for a test doesn't make sense, but it's still a fail. Or let's say the user types in 990, but he adds a 0 by mistake. 900 or 900 out of 100 doesn't make sense so we need to have boundary conditions as well like in the case of bigger than and equal to 50 but there's a different if structure that we can utilize to make this much easier so thank you very much thank you for watching and i hope to see you soon